my dad, I know he, he woke up and he, the first thing he did was call my brother and he called him and he called him over and over again and he didn't answer. And hours later, I was woken up to both my parents standing over my bed in tears. And my immediate response was to say, everything's gonna be okay. I didn't know, I didn't know what was going on. I just saw them crying. And my mom said, no, it's not. He is my older brother, and he was very funny. He was very smart. He was very outgoing. He was probably the friendliest person that you could ever meet. There was nobody like him. <laughs> nobody like him. He was accepted into UNC's engineering program. He was a genius, and he, wanted, he really wanted to go to college, but he never got the chance to. He was my best friend. He was meant, I believe he was made to be my brother. Growing up, it was always me, him, and my big sister. And he had two other siblings on his mom's side. He was my dad's first child. My dad had him when he was just 17 years old, and they were very close. There was a big age gap between us, but um, he, he was kind of like, my protector, like I remember he would pick me up from, he would pick me up from school and take me and my sister to the gas station, play our favorite songs, buy us candy. He was everything a big brother was supposed to be. He, he was the oldest out of all of his siblings, so he was pretty familiar with the role of big brother. Um, he was just good, he was, he was so good with us. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. He used to, when he used to babysit me and my sister, he used to like lock us up in the closet and stuff. And he was, he was just everything a big brother was supposed to be really. It was fun growing up, the three of us, my parents did a really good job raising us. And I believe that they did, they did everything right raising us. Our family was very close. It, it, it is still very close. Um, he, he just, he took really good care of everyone. He was, he tied everything together in our family. He really just got along with everybody. There was not a person that my brother did not get along with, ever. When he turned 18, he was picked up by another family member, and he was, he moved to Florida, and he was led to a lifestyle that eventually led to his demise. And um, he was introduced to drugs by somebody he relied on and trusted at a very young age, and um, he tried really hard to get out of that. I was, again, 10 years younger than him, so my perspective on his story is different because I, I, I didn't know, I didn't understand a lot of the stuff that my brother was dealing with. I was eight or nine when he moved away, and I didn't get to say goodbye to him that time. Um, but I did get to talk to him here and there, but it was for a long time that I didn't get to speak to him. And I couldn't understand why I was missing out on such a huge chunk of his life and why I wasn't, why my brother had moved away. My young mind just didn't understand. So yeah, I, I've later found out since he's passed away a lot of the stuff that happened, um, but it's definitely like I'm, pe I'm still piecing together the pieces. He died, he passed away about a year and a half ago. Um, my parents 
my mom got a call at 4 a.m. from my aunt um, saying that my brother was deceased and my mom had to wake up my dad and tell him that their son was dead. She sat me down in the living room, me and my sister, and my dad told us that my brother was found deceased in his room. Um, there were empty Xanax bottles that were prescribed to him. Um, but what had killed him was MDMA pills laced with fentanyl. We had heard about fentanyl a little bit before, and I know my dad, my dad, um, we knew my brother had a problem with drugs before, so we, we've, heard, we've heard a little bit about it here and there, and my dad was really concerned. Um, my brother knew about fentanyl. He used fentanyl testing strips, uh, but this time we believe he ran out of his prescription of Xanax and turned to street drugs. Um, and my first reaction after hearing that he had passed, I just immediately, like, my brain could not process the pain because it was so big. I couldn't, I just couldn't process it. So for the next 24 hours, I spent awake. I didn't eat. I didn't sleep. I just thought. I just tried to think about, oh, he must be on vacation. When's he coming back? Because I hadn't seen him in so long. I hadn't got the chance to say goodbye to him. Prior to his passing, in order to get away from drugs and a more difficult lifestyle, he, he moved to Alaska to be closer to our family. He became a tour guide on Alaska railroads, and he really flourished in that job. He was such a social butterfly, and he was so good with talking. His friends would say that he could make gravel sound interesting. That was a great job for him. He enjoyed it. He got to, you know, see beautiful views and talk about his home where he was really from, Alaska. And he seemed like he was doing really well for a while. Uh, I noticed I, I was speaking to him more. Um, my, my sister was speaking to him more. He had some sort of appreciation and love for life that I've never seen in anybody before in my life. In Alaska, he was doing, he was doing great. He, he seemed happy. Um, and I think I struggled a little bit with the years that I missed out on you know, having him in my life as a brother, actively speaking to him because he had moved away and gotten involved, gotten dragged into some things. And I missed out on a big chunk of his life. And I think a little part of me may have felt hurt. And I didn't say goodbye to him when he left. And that was the last time I ever saw him. And I didn't say goodbye. I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to him. And now I have to live with that for the rest of my life because someone gave him fentanyl-laced pills. I'm learning it's hard to be kind to myself because I, there's no way I could have known that that was going to happen. And it wasn't my fault. But when you love someone and they're struggling, it's just like what I could have I could have done something. There's always that thought in your head. It's hard to get it out. But I know that he he was very strong. He was really he was trying his best to get out of that. I mean, he moved to another state to try to get away from it. But I know that when you're addicted to drugs, it's a, it's a disease. It's not something you can just 
kick kick to the curb and say, I'm going to stop doing this. I've heard that sometimes with, like, opioid addiction, you need the drug like anybody, like, craves water. So I know that it couldn't have been easy to kick, but it's it's difficult to understand the disease of addiction, and I feel like when a lot of people hear if I tell people that my brother passed away and they say, how did he pass away? And I say that it was a drug overdose. The first thing people think about is he was, he was just a junkie. He was just addicted. He didn't care about himself. He didn't care about his life. But my brother, he adored every little, every little thing in life. He had like a, a childlike appreciation for all of the little things, especially nature. He loved nature. That's why he became a tour guide, I believe, and he was so good at it for that reason because he's just so good at pointing out and appreciating everything that's beautiful, and that was something everybody, I think everybody loved about him. He made it easy to fall in love with life, and I just want to move forward with life with the same kind of perspective that he had. <laughs> I think that people need to understand that people who have addiction, who, who struggle with addiction, had a life before addiction and can have one after. Um, the support, it's important. Um, it's, not, it's not just black and white and... Um, I think it's I think it's also concerning. There was no there was no real investigation into his death. No one tried to access his phone and we hired to get someone we hired someone to get into it and that was unsuccessful. We tried to communicate with big tech companies to get into his social media accounts, get into his devices. Those attempts were all unsuccessful. They were no help. And it just felt like it, it didn't matter to them what's going on. It felt like something that was so big to us and something that had changed, completely changed and ruined our lives was just not that important to everyone else and it felt like life was still going on for everyone else but for me I mean I mean I have to spend the rest of my life trying to understand and piece together this puzzle and I have to remember him longer than I've even known him and he's my brother and I should not I should not have lost him to something so simple yet so complicated, I feel. Somebody took him from me. I feel like I was robbed of all of the, the things I was supposed to do with him. I'm, I'm just now becoming an adult. He was already an adult. And he's supposed to be here He's my big brother. He's supposed to be here to help me find my way. And now I don't have that. I don't have him to do that. And I feel like he was my protector. And I don't, a piece of me is, there was a piece of me that died with him. And it's, it's really hard to navigate life without that piece of myself and without him. Um, he did not want to die. I know he didn't want to die. He wanted, I know he wanted to get better. And I know he was getting better, but it was just that one pill that took it all away from him, took it all away from us. Um, and suddenly I, 
I don't have a big brother anymore. And I have to spend the rest of my life coming to terms with that. And nobody gets punished for it. And I know that there is a lot of people that have argued that when people who take pills and overdose on laced pills, they need to take some sort of responsibility for it. But he paid the price. He paid the ultimate price. He lost his life. And whoever sold him those laced pills is still out there doing the same thing to multiple other people. People die every day because of this. And it's just, it's not. I don't understand how people are not, like, going crazy about this, the way that people are dying from it. I didn't even know that it was going on. I had heard about fentanyl here and there, but I didn't know that. Right. I never would have thought that this would have happened to me. Never in a million years. Especially with the way my parents raised us, um, kept us away from all of that stuff, you know, drugs and everything. And they kept us well informed about those types of things especially in our teenage years, me, my sister, my brother. Um, but it still ended up taking him away from us, which shocks me to this day. It's taken me forever. And I assume it will take me many more years to come to terms with that fact.